Hey everybody and welcome back to Dan's Pro Shop where everything's made up and the instructions don't matter. That's right, just like that parking ticket you got in the town you're never going back to. <laughs> Today we're going over the home shop. I put out a short a while back and you guys are actually interested. After seeing what I got going on at work, we might as well go on and go through what I got going on in the home shop. So we're going to split this up into sections so it's easier to watch and start here with the main toolbox. Let's dive in to see what it's all about. All right, so right off the bat here, what we have is a 42 inch Craftsman Professional Stainless Box. I know it's not stainless, but that's what they call it. This thing has to be going on 15, 20 years old. I've had this for quite a while. This was the first quality box that I bought. And back then, Craftsman was still something to have. It was right up there with the big names that we still have now. It's roughly two feet or so deep. So starting on the top here, got all of our stickers and paraphernalia on the lid. You know, stuff that you want to save throughout the years. Those important decals that you don't want to lose. I tried to keep the front of the box relatively clean. If you guys can't tell, I did work at a truck shop for quite a while, so that was my little badge of honor there. So going ahead and starting at the top here, we got a Craftsman halogen work light that just magnets onto the top of the lid there. Of course, it's nothing compared to the LEDs we have now, but it still works, so why not have it around? Up here on the lid, you see this piece of aluminum here. I just pop riveted onto the lid. So I got something to clip all my tape measures on. You know, slide some paperwork back in there. It's just nice. I keep my ear pro hanging up there, a digital level. And then these are all my go-to battery tools. I've got a 3.8 M12 stubby, the 3.8 mid-torque half inch. Yeah, that's a half inch, should be. Yeah. And then the Snap-on 14.4 3.8 with the toggle. If you guys have this thing, you know how amazing this is. Until the Milwaukee Stubby came out, this was hands down the best cordless 3.8s that you could buy. Behind that, we got some chargers. The 14.4 uh, the Trouble Light. Love that thing. Some black nitrile gloves. Because it's just nice to not have to wash your hands every time you get back in a vehicle. Especially if you're dealing customer-wise. You don't want to have to stop every time you need to go in and do a key cycle just to clean your hands. So these are good to have around. Regular old gloves. In the back here, I got my set of torque angle, torque wrenches. This is 3 eighths and the half inch variety there behind it. And right up front here, this is one of those Mac twist lock socket trays. So if you see here, they don't come out unless you twist a quarter turn to the left, then you can pull it out because it un unlocks the detent of the ball inside of that rail. I absolutely love this thing. It's handy because if you need to take this whole thing out, take it with you, God forbid you drop this thing, your sockets ain't rolling all over creation. Everything is locked in here. It's super nice. Coming down here to the top drawer, this is the equivalent of the junk drawer in your kitchen. This is just where stuff kind of goes to die, but there's good stuff in here. Let's see, we got a trailer harness tester, battery terminal. This is one of those cam lock things for a oil pan. So you don't have to take the drain plug in and out. You just open this and close it like a ball valve. So whenever you do services on big semi trucks that you're doing them all the time, like an oil change every weekend, these things are absolutely awesome. So we got some soapstone for drawing on metal. Hey, a crappy Harbor Freight caliper for whenever precision really matters. <laughs> Let's see, a uh, compression tester. Those uh, security bits. Oh, just uh, safety pins here. I actually use these for electrical diag. It's nice that you can use these to back probe different pins. Like whenever you get into Deutz pins and like those weatherproof connectors that you need to get through that rubber in the back and still touch it with your multimeter. These things are actually really handy for that. 
So we've got some fuel line and AC line disconnectors. Um, more to the compression tester thing. These guys right here, I found these on a whim just flipping through Amazon. These things screw on to the actuators that hold the hood up. So if you guys are familiar, whenever those actuators go bad, you got to have like a prop stick to hold the hood up. These things, the end of the screw in here is actually brass. So it won't harm the actuation cylinder whenever you clamp this thing down onto it. These are handy, never get used too often, but boy is it nice whenever you come across that vehicle that the hood shocks are, sh are totally blown out. Let's keep moving on down here. Miscellaneous plier drawer. I know it's not pretty, but they gotta go somewhere, so this is where 90% of them end up. Down here, this is more of the specialty sockets. This is a 3 8 and half inch drive. This is a Craftsman kit from back in the day, whenever they were still stamped with the USA in the handle. These are uh, Proto half inch drive, hex. We've got some Snap-on long reach, Allens. These are Gear Wrench, Sunex torque drive. This is a relatively new kit, if you can tell, it's still clean. And then we got some just junk Harbor Freight ball end Allens, because you know, Anything smaller than a quarter inch ball end Allen, especially on an extension like this, you just snap that ball off of there every time. I can't tell you how many times I've taken these kit back to get new one. It, it's, I can't see spending the snap on price on these ball end Allens because I break them so often. And then just some more stuff, some triple squares, invert, inverted torques, some extended torques, some torque screwdrivers. You know, these newer vehicles, everything is a T fastener. It's annoying coming down here we got some specialty wrenches regular old screwdrivers this guy here is a uh, carburetor service kit it's got like the jet screwdrivers and little brushes and everything to get in there this is a, a tecton uh well what would you call this digital electronic service kit it's got those wee little screwdrivers and everything for like tearing apart cell phones this thing was about 30 bucks i think i picked it up at royal king super handy to have this doesn't get used often but it's nice to have that in your repertoire here moving over here this kit right here is offset sun x wrenches another thing that doesn't get used often but whenever you run into that weird hydraulic hose that you can't reach the fitting bob's your uncle these guys come in handy this dude right here, this is for a Harley rear axle nut. If you guys have ever worked on motorcycles, especially full dressers like an Ultra, to get to that rear axle nut, you have to remove the saddlebag. More often than not, you really got to take off the exhaust too, and it's just a royal pain in the butt. This guy, the way that it's constructed with this half inch hole here, you can either put your ratchet in there, put an extension in there, or whatever. This allows you to get behind the saddlebag and all the hardware on the side of the bike to remove that axle nut without disassembling the whole rear end of that bike. This thing is probably about 20 bucks. I'll see if I can't link this. I can't really remember where I got it, but it's a lifesaver. This guy, quarter inch drive T-handle. If you guys ever spend any quality time working on dirt bikes, you know T-handles are just absolute lifesavers these things tear everything apart but instead of being one fixed size t-handle all three ends of this thing are a quarter inch drive how cool is that so i just keep the normal ones on here a 10 mil on this side an 8 mil on that side and a regular number two phillips this dude is so handy you can tear apart the plastics on a bike in no time with this thing some big old crow's feet again for hydraulic fittings because you get into stuff that's that big you need stuff that's that big over here, we still got some more Craftsman. Like I said, back in the day when these things were still stamped USA, these are worth having. Some regular old line wrenches. And then here, these are uh, Everest, I think. It's like a knockoff brand from Napa. These are crow's feet line wrenches. And these things have really saved my butt a time or two. You're laying underneath a truck and you need to get a fuel line off, but it's above a tank or something weird that you can't reach. Throw this old girl on an extension, get up over the obstruction, and you still have the pluses of a line wrench that you know you're not going to break the flare off of that fitting. You know, you'll twist the whole line off, but you won't round off the nut. 
over here, just a, a crappy click type 3 8 uh, torque wrench from Craftsman. Got that on promo a while ago, yeah, back when they were still open. Some more crow's feet up here. These are longer extensions are going in here. Got a half inch, three eighths, and a quarter. And this guy that I keep on throwing around, this is an old sock full of desiccant. If you guys are familiar with desiccant, its job in life is to absorb moisture. And if you guys hanging out in a garage like me, there you go, there's a heater there. Whenever it's really cold out here like this, you heat up the garage really rapidly, everything sweats, specifically metal stuff. And your tools will reflect that. You open your drawer, everything's wet and dripping, and eventually they're gonna rust like crazy. Get yourself some desiccant, put it in an old sock and zip tie the end. Throw one of these in every drawer, you'll never have a problem again. You're gonna see that the common theme throughout here. This here would be the go-to socket drawer. So just like the, the sock full of desiccant, whenever I get a package in the mail or something, you know, keep these too, throw them in your socket rails. Why not? I mean, look, a lot of these sockets are 15, 20 some years old, barely rusty. You can tell the ones that lived in my service truck for a while because they're a bit beat up. But for the most part, these things are still in good shape. The majority of these impact sockets are all Sun X. I love, love, love Sun X sockets. I know they're Taiwanese, but they have a lifetime warranty and I have yet to break a Sun X socket. The only one that I've ever needed to replace is because I had to cut it in half with an angle grinder because I had an axle nut stuck in the socket that I absolutely needed to get back. That's the only way I've ever broken one of these. Going back here, this is a mix of text, Tecton and Craftsman sockets. There's some gear wrench thrown around in here too. A bin full of adapters and swivels and whatnot. You know, the, the stuff that you don't go to too often. Over here, got some duplicate swivels and then these adapters that go in a quarter inch chuck. And up here, these are some 3 8 snap-on swivels. These are nice in some instances because they are significantly thinner than the impact sockets. So if you need to get in a weird spot to get like a bolt off of a coil or, you know, that spark plug that's in behind the manifold just right that you can't reach, these things are super handy. Speaking of spark plugs, I keep the spark plug sockets right out here in front and I marked them with paint marker so I know which ones they are if they get mixed up into the rail. Over here, my normal old go-to ratchets. I got a couple of these guys here. What is this? The FHX80A. This is probably the best darn ratchet on the face of the planet. This is probably God's gift to man as far as a manual ratchet goes. It has a flex head, but it locks. Not only does it lock, but you can unlock it and keep it unlocked so this pivots just like a regular old flex head. I absolutely love this thing. And I know, I know, you buy the snap on, you get the snap on price. But stuff like this that you use every day, there is no substitution for a snap-on ratchet. Diving in here more with a snap-on half-inch, the same thing, just a half-inch variety. A crappy Harbor Freight quarter-inch drive. But holy cow, would you look at the similarities in that. I wonder why snap-on tried to sue them a couple years back, hmm? Moving on down here. Pry bars and other just random long stuff that really doesn't fit anywhere else. Got me a stethoscope here for different diagnostics so you can hear top end rattles and all crap like that. This thing right here, I got this off the Mack truck on a promo too. This is an axle seal puller. So if you can uh, use your imagination here, this hook end would go on the inside of the seal or the bearing in an axle your hand stays on this knurled part and then you whack this part with a hammer so it pulls everything out but keeps your digits out of the way. Really handy, I love this thing. Got some cruddy tire bars here and then just a piece of pipe. This is handy, you know, throw an Allen wrench in there, what have you, whatever you need. Some pieces of brass for whenever you hit, need to hit something but not destroy it. It's nice to have this stuff laying around. Next drawer here, this is the electrical Pish posh drawer. 
I know it's gross, but that's just because there's a lot of crap in here. And this is the only way I can get it all in. This is a wire furl kit. It's got a bunch of furls in it and the crimper. I think this was like 30 or 40 bucks on Amazon. I'll see if I can't link this also. Some more Craftsman stuff from back in the day. You remember every Christmas they would come out with something crazy that you know you just had to get dad that year. I mean, one year it was like the Roto Grip, or one year it was like that flexible head flashlight that everybody's dad had hanging in the garage. Well, this was one of those also. It is a pair of wire strippers on one side. You flip this lever, and then it goes the other way to a pair of lineman pliers. How handy is that? I mean, Craftsman really used to be something. It's absolutely disheartening that we lost a brand as good as this. So continuing on through the drawer here, we got some Greenlee crimpers, some Klein banana cutters, you know, just random stuff, a DC voltage regulator. I mean, there's everything in here. Some Super 33, some Super 88. Yeah, that's the good stuff. We keep that locked away. And then just some random parts and stuff. Anything 12 volt related goes in here. Moving on down here, we're in the pneumatic drawer, which is getting significantly smaller over the years because of how awesome batteries are getting. So, right off of the bat, an Ingersoll half inch titanium gun, just like that snap on ratchet is God's gift to ratchets. This is probably the same thing for air impact guns. Boy, this thing is loud, it's nasty, it's powerful, and everybody in the shop knows whenever you fire this old girl up because she is screaming and doing work. I absolutely love this gun. That being said, here's the little brother. The three-eighths of the same thing. The same story goes with this guy. Insanely powerful, really loud, and does a great job. Some things... Batteries are great for, but other things you just need power. Plug in and get her done. Got some air ratchets that are really becoming extinct. You can tell that I hardly ever use this thing. It still looks brand new. You know, you get a battery operated one of these, why lug around a hose? Let's see, we got a chipping hammer. Yes, I was a welder in a past life. Uh, Three eighths air ratchet. A uh, air gun. And then here, some uh, accessories for the air hammer. For those of you that may not know, Snap-on is awesome for some things. Just like here. These air hammer attachments, guess what? These are lifetime warranty. Yeah, that alone was worth buying this thing. Yes, it's pricey, but Hey, sometimes it's worth it because if you're in the field, you're pounding out pins and excavators and everything. You go through these things like candy. Every week I was taking these things on the truck to get new ones. That's why this one right here is brand new. That was the last thing I did was get new chisels. And then some blow guns and rotary files and other stuff. There's all kinds of crap in there. Next drawer down. Some more air stuff, but this is more material removing stuff. There's like a die grinder. I think we got an extended Mac. There's uh, that swivel head Mac die grinder that everybody loved. I found that thing by accident one time, and I'm super glad that I did. It gets into all those weird spots. You know, it's a straight die grinder, but the head locks and pivots in different directions. This is really hard to do one-handed, but you can imagine. This thing tilts backward and forward like 30 degrees. Really nice to have. The regular old Milwaukee heat gun of the plug-in variety. Some more junk craftsman uh, nut drivers that hardly ever get used. Honestly, I can't believe that I still have them. They should have been nixed a long time ago. And under here, we have a, a snap-on half-inch impact driver kit. That's really handy for taking those stubborn Phillips head screws out of brake rotors. You need one of those. Getting on our way to the bottom. This is another mashup drawer with just bigger stuff that really doesn't fit anywhere else. A timing light that's really becoming a thing of the past. I couldn't tell you the last time I used that thing, but it still works great. So I'm keeping it. That green kit right there. That is an AC testing kit. You know, it has the glasses, the dye, 
the gauges, all that crap. Everything you need to diagnose a potential problem in an AC circuit, that kit, Bob's your uncle. Over here, we that's like a punch and chisel holding set. There's a handle in there that indexes different punches and chisels. It, it holds it and it has a nice like rubbery handle so you don't smash your thumb up whenever you're doing it all day. And then some other random crap. And there's some old pipe wrenches and hacksaws. Some body clip pliers. And at the very bottom here, a couple cordless grinders, some more hacksaws, C-clips, and just a ton of grinding and cutting wheels. And we get on the other side of the bottom box here. Strictly extensions. Quarter, three-eighths, and half. Not all of them. Some of the longer ones are up here like you saw before. But this is the majority. They're just nice, low-profile, good spot for them. Here, more of the electrical diag drawer. This is an extension of this guy. So I keep my meter here because I go to it so often. It's just handy. You pull out this drawer. More often than not, you can just leave it here. Set it up, do whatever you're doing. You put extension leads on this thing. You're working on the car right behind you. You just leave the meter in the drawer. Some Weller soldering irons here. There's a small Radio Shack heat gun. For those of you that know, give me a shout out and tell me how awesome Radio Shack was. This guy right here is a uh, non-rechargeable inspection scope. It's a little guy. It's about the size of your iPhone. But it has a six-foot camera on it. It takes double A's. So if it dies on you, you don't have to wait for the thing to charge. Just slap some more batteries in there and keep going. I mean, for as often as you use an inspection scope, it's just awesome to have one of these things and not have to worry about batteries. Whenever you need it, pull them out of your flashlight. Put them in there. Who cares? Get the job done. This thing is absolutely awesome. This is the uh, drawer of Thor that we've come to call it. And if you guys don't know about these dead blow ball peens, Man, you need to educate yourself. Because I thought regular old ball peen hammers like this gear wrench one were here were awesome until I learned about these. You swing these things all day, having that dead blow head makes all the difference in the world. And not to mention this cushy comfort grip handle and the lifetime warranty. I know I'm kind of coming off like a snap on fanboy here, but whenever you're working in the industry and all these trucks come to your shop every week, it's kind of hard not to be. They throw you this giant line of credit with no annual percentage rate. It's just awesome. This stuff is worth having when you do it every day. Oh, and there's also a two-pound brass hammer under there. Yeah, you know what those are for. This is the kind of whatever drawer. All the weird pliers and stuff that don't really have a home. So, different oil wrench pliers. There's a piston ring compressor. Some band pliers. One of these fancy things to bend brake line with. There's a, a ball joint tool. Oh, what a coolant tester in there. There's just oh, all kinds of stuff. I'm not even sure what's all in here. And then this is more of the kits, the stuff that you want to stay together. Like a power steering, pulley installation and removal kit. Like this is a power probe. We can do a separate video on this thing. It's absolutely amazing. This is a relay buddy. I've done a video about that thing in the past. This will save your butt if you don't know what you're getting into. This is a, just a, a junk OBD2 scanner. Something just to read and clear codes with. It's not really good for much else. This guy, just uh, some spare uh, electrical leads for the meter. Like I said, if the car is behind you and you need to get there, it's just good to have some extra wires that will clip into your meter. And going to add what this is. Some more hex drives. That's a Noid light tester kit for injectors. Oh, there's just all kinds of stuff. Well, fellas, I think that's about it. I know this got to be a little long-winded, but it's difficult to go through all this stuff without explaining everything as we go. Well, congratulations, everybody. You completed part one of Dan's Pro Shop home shop tour. If you guys are interested in this kind of crap, stay tuned because there's going to be a lot more to this series. I can't promise you when it's going to come out, but I'm going to do my best to keep up on this to keep you guys interested. So if you guys saw anything in here that you like, go ahead and check out the description. I'm going to do my best to try to link the stuff that I can so you can get your hands on it. 
So stay tuned and we'll see you next time.